Greetings! In this video, we're going to talk about the third and final step of input process output, which is outputting the results to the screen. We've already been over the, the topic of how to print things using the print function, so now it's just a matter of applying it so that we can solve the specific problem we're working on. As a reminder, the problem that we're trying to solve in this video series has been getting two numbers from the user, calculating the average, and outputting the result. In the previous videos, we already w went through the steps of getting the numbers and calculating the average, so now we just need to print it. And we're going to make sure that we do so in the way that the problem specifically describes. So there's a couple things you need to think about when you're outputting. Uh, first is what needs to appear on the screen. Um, what does that output need to look like? So sometimes you know, we will ask you to print things out in a certain order. Sometimes uh, we're going to ask for them to be on the same line or on different lines. So you'll have to be careful and pay attention to what, what's actually being asked. And in the rare occasions, mostly on programming exercises, we will ask you to print some text before or after the answer. So you'll have to do a little bit of string manipulation uh, using print and uh, you know just put multiple commas in what you want to print. So why don't we go ahead and actually output the answer. So fortunately here it's going to be real simple. Uh, all we need to do is print out the average. So I'm just going to go ahead and just push print average and that way when I have two values, so for example, maybe a 5 and a 10, the output here you can see in black is 7.5. And this is where we do our final check and we look at it and we say, is this the actual output I expect? Is it to the correct number of decimal places? Everything looks okay, so I think we're good to go. So when we put it all together, I wanted you to see the logic design that we wrote in our code and how it corresponds to what we actually ended up writing in Python. So these are the four steps getting a number, storing it in number one, getting a number, storing it in variable number two, and then adding number one, number two, divided by two, and storing the answer in a variable called average, and outputting the average. So you can see how each one of these corresponds to a single line of code. It's not always going to be that case. Your logic design doesn't always tell you line by line what the code will be, but if you can draw this parallel between your logic design and your code, you get a sense that you are writing logic design at the right level of detail. So in summary, with input, process, and output, what we're trying to do is get values from the user. In future lessons, it won't just be from the user, but for now, that's okay. We process them in some fashion. We do some math on them. And then finally, we output the result. And this is a good slide that shows you the general questions you need to be thinking about. The one that trips up everybody is the data type. So making sure when I get an input, am I getting a float, an integer, or a string? You really need to think about that. The very last thing we're talking about in this video is this idea of syntax versus semantics. And we bring it up now because a lot of you are going to encounter these types of errors and you're going to need to understand what the computer can detect and what the computer has a hard time of detecting. So a syntax error basically refers to the structure of your Python code, making sure you actually follow the rules of the language. For example, in my code, if I just did this, number one equals, and I didn't put anything, I would get an error that tells me invalid syntax. And the reason is, is that I'm not following the rules of the language. I can't have an assignment statement that doesn't have a value on this side. If I do this, everything is fine, but now the program may not do what I wanted it to do, right? Now it's not getting two numbers from the user, it's only getting one. This is what we refer to as a semantic error. So now we're talking about the meaning. The code technically follows all the rules of the language, but does it do what you want it to do? So for example here, printing A plus B is perfectly legal in Python. It just may not do what you want it to do. So hopefully this has been an informative lesson. Uh, hopefully you are getting more and more confident with the syntax of Python. Uh, we're going to need to work on the semantics. There's a lot of nuance to that, so don't worry about it. Uh, at this point, if you have the ability to produce uh, the, the basic program that we showed you in this video series, you are well on your way to being able to do some cooler things in Python. So it's baby steps. Uh, be patient, and we know you can do it. All right? Keep studying, keep programming. Let us know how we can help.